When you're painting with watercolour, do you have difficulty knowing how wet your paper should be in order to achieve the different edges that you want to include on your painting? Well, if you do, let me see if I can shine a light on that for you. Painting in watercolour is all about the timing. Knowing when to put the pigment onto the paper and knowing what consistency that pigment should be is crucial. And it takes a lot of practice to understand this. So there's wet paper and there's dry paper. But if you've painted with watercolour, then you know that there's a lot more to it than that. So to keep it simple, I like to say that there are four stages. There's wet paper and there's dry paper, but there's also damp paper and what I call almost dry paper. So let's have a closer look at the four stages and how I use them in my paintings. I'm painting on Arsh hot press paper here and I'm just painting some water onto the surface. Now wet paper is really glossy. Here you can see that glossy sheen on the surface. And while it's wet like this, you usually use your paint a bit thinner. And the paint moves around over the surface of the paper and it creates soft and lost edges. And when you introduce another colour onto wet paper, the colours just run into one another. So you can see those colours just merging together. So the other thing you can do on wet paper like this is you can tilt the paper to move the colours around. When I paint on really wet paper like that, I'm either painting backgrounds or I'm painting initial washes on different subjects. My paint is usually fairly thin, so I've added water to the pigment before I use it. For example, the background on this chrysanthemum painting was painted while the paper was quite wet and I used a watery consistency of paint. So before I put the paint on the paper, I just wet the area that I want to work on first. I put a fair amount of water on it. So here you can see how much water there is. You can see that the paint is moving around quite freely on that paper. So you can see it's quite wet here and this gives me plenty of time to put the background on because it's so wet. I just drop the watery paint on and I just let it do its thing. Similarly, I completed this little cardinal painting this week and this simple background splash here was painted on wet paper with watery paint. So I've wet the paper here beside the log and now I'm just dropping in some of the watery Windsor Violet just onto that wet paper. I've got a Galar painting here that I can show you. The very first wash on the body of this bird was painted on wet paper. And then when it was dry, I worked over the top of it and I added detail. So here you can see how wet the wash is over the top of the paper. It's quite wet. So then as soon as I've got the water where I want it, I put the watery paint on. You can see it's quite wet there. Now if I was to pick my paper up and tilt it, the paint would move all over that water. And this is what it looked like after it had dried. The next level of wetness I like to call damp paper. Now that's when I do a lot of the work on my paintings. You can achieve soft but controlled edges when you work on damp paper. It's a good time to blend colours and it's also the time when you can lift colour back off the paper to create highlights. 
you'll know it's at this stage because it will have a nice sheen on the surface. Let's have a look. So I'll just wet another area of this paper. So this time before I paint, I'll wait just a little while, just until the water starts to absorb into the paper slightly. What I like to do is put the water on the paper and then I sop up any puddles that might be there with my damp brush, just so that there's not an excess amount of water on the paper and I have to wait too long for it to soak in. So once the water is on there, then I can just use my damp brush just to sop a little bit of it back up. So at this stage, the paper still has a sheen on the surface, but the water's not floating around on top of the surface. It's soaked into the paper slightly. So this is the time that I love to paint when the paper's like this. So here on the left is the wet paper, and the one on the right is what I call the damp paper. So it's just soaked in slightly, but that sheen is still there. So this damp paper gives you those lovely soft edges and it's just soft sections of paint that just merge beautifully together. And you can get soft fuzzy lines instead of hard sharp lines that you get on dry paper. I'll often paint my washes on damp paper like this just so that I can work a bit slower. I don't have to rush quite so much when I'm putting the wash on because I'm not worried about hard edges forming in my paint. I can also drop other colours on and I can blend colours on the paper rather than on the palette when the paper's like this. This is also a time when you can use your brush to lift highlights out of the paint. So you just take a damp brush and wipe over the paint and then you can create highlights. You can also use a tissue. You can dab off the paint and create highlights that way. So on this cardinal painting, the first wash on the log or the branch that the bird's standing on was painted on damp paper. So I put the water on and I make sure there's no great puddles anywhere before I start putting the paint on. So then I put the watery paint on and then that dampness on the paper just gives me all those lovely soft edges where the water is. And then before that dries, I just drop in some other colours. And because the paper's damp, the paints just merge together all by themselves. So you get some lovely effects on damp paper really without even trying. While that paper was at this stage of drying, I was also able to lift off some of the paint with my brush to create some highlights on the beak and on some of the feathers as well. So here on the beak I've just painted a light wash of the red over the top and before that light wash had dried I'm coming back in with some darker pigment now and I'm just darkening the bottom half of the beak. And then what I want to do is just wash the paint out of my brush take off the excess moisture that's on my brush. So just have a damp brush and I can increase that highlight on the top of the beak by taking a bit of paint off. So this is what I can do on the damp paper. If it was too wet, I wouldn't be able to do that. And if it was too dry, I wouldn't be able to do that either. So over on the feathers, on this wing feather here, I've just put a wash on, the paper's damp, and now I'm taking a bit of paint off with my damp brush, just to create a highlight. I just want to let you know too, that the full tutorial of this cardinal painting is available on Patreon now. The link to find out more about my Patreon site is in the description of this video. Okay, let's have another look at this chrysanthemum painting. Most of the work I did on this painting was on damp paper. I'd work on a small section of each petal at a time. So here I'm just working on this small thin section of petal. I'm just painting some water on there. And then before that water dries, 
I'll put some paint on there. So when I put the paint onto the damp paper, I get those lovely soft paint edges, which is what I'm looking for. Because I wanted lots of detail on this painting, I only work on a small section at a time. I don't wet an area that's too large because if I do it'll dry too quickly and I won't be able to get those lovely soft edges. So then when I'm finished with that area, I move away from it to another area and I put some water on there, I dampen the paper there. So if I get any puddles forming in the water, I'll just use my brush as a sponge and just absorb some of it. So when I've got that nice even coverage of water over the top and a nice sheen on the surface of the paper, I just pop the paint on. Here I'm using lots of pigment, so I've wiped my damp brush over the paint where it's squirted out on my palette and I get that really dark pigment. I just work my way up the petal, just on the damp paper. Keep reloading my brush as I need more paint. And if it starts to dry before I get to finish it, then I need to let it completely dry. And then I can re-wet the paper and start again. The next level of paper wetness I call almost dry. So it's not completely dry, but it's getting there. Now this is the danger level. I spoke about this in my tutorial last week here on YouTube about how to avoid watercolor blooms. Well, this is the time when you risk disturbing any work that you've done on your paper if you put water or a watery wash on it or next to it. So back to my scrap paper here and I'm just painting some water on again. Now I have to let this dry quite a bit so I've got to let it sit for a little while until most of the sheen's gone off the surface. Now I've let that sit for a while and you can see that it's still damp, it's not completely dry but most of the sheen has gone off the surface. So now you can paint on this almost dry paper, just in a wonderfully loose manner. It's a time when you can use your paint a bit thicker than you normally do. So not as watery as before. And you can just create some lovely shapes on the paper. But as I said, this is the time when you risk disturbing any washes that you might have drying on the paper. So if I go back to my other example where I put some paint on the paper before. So here on this damp area. Now this is starting to dry. You can see it's lost its sheen. It's quite dull. It's not completely dry, but it's getting there. So now if I put watery paint on here or just water, this is when I'm going to disturb the pigment. So I've got the watery paint there, putting it onto that underwash that's almost dry. I'll put some water on there as well. So I'll show you from above. And you can see how that watery wash and water has disturbed the drying pigment. So if your wash is at this point where it's starting to dry, don't put watery paint or water anywhere near it unless you want a bloom to form. I rarely paint on the paper at this stage. I might sometimes want to paint a line on something like a flower where I want a definite line but I don't want it to be a hard line like what I'd get if I was painting on dry paper. For example, in this painting here these fine lines on the petal were painted while the paper was not quite dry. When I picked up the paint, I just wiped my damp brush over the pigment where it was squirted out on the palette. So if I had used a really wet brush and watery paint, then I would have disturbed all the work that I'd already done on the petal. Let's have a look at that. 
So all the work I've done on this petal here is almost dry now. And I'm just using just a small amount of pigment here on my brush just to create these soft fuzzy lines. Now what I could have done if I was just beginning and just learning, I could have dried off my first layer of paint with the hairdryer and made it really dry and then I could have re-wet it with water and waited until it was almost dry again and then I could have put these lines on. That would take me longer to do but at least I wouldn't be worried about disturbing that wash underneath. And the final stage, of course, is dry paper. So when you paint watercolour on dry paper, you get those hard or sharp paint edges. You get perfect shapes, both positive and negative, and you can paint jagged or broken edges when you use a dry brush method. Okay, so back to my scrap paper. I've got no water on the paper here at all. I'm just using my watery paint on the dry paper. So then you get those hard edges around everything that you paint. You can create positive and negative shapes on the dry paper. So if you draw a line, it's going to have sharp edges on it. There's no fuzzy edges anymore. So when I'm painting detail on my paintings, or the final details, it's usually on the dry paper. So you can use watery paint, but you can also use a dry brush method. So by that I mean you can take a damp brush and pick up the pigment and then just use the side of the brush just to create those broken edges across the paper. So here on my McCall painting that I've shown you once before, these marks here on the beak were created with a dry brush method. Now dry brushing is the topic for another tutorial, but basically you pick the paint up with a slightly damp brush and then you use the side of the bristles to brush the paint on. And then you get that jagged, jumpy look across the surface, like I showed you in the example earlier. So here I'm just painting some detail onto the beak with a fine brush, just on the dry paper. And then when I wanted the dry brushing, the texture, I just use the side of my brush. And then I just move it back and forth and I get that textured look to my marks. So here on my cardinal painting, I'm just painting some detail onto the log now. Now this is over the top of my underwash, but the underwash is completely dry. I'm just painting some Payne's Grey, just on the dry paper here. And then I can get those hard edges. I've got complete control. And here... I'm just using my fine liner brush and I'm just painting some longer thin spidery lines on the dry paper. I don't want the soft fuzzy lines here, I want definite hard lines. So that's why I'm painting on the dry paper. And of course when I paint the eye on, I want complete control. So I always paint the eye on the dry paper as well. So basically they are the four stages of paper wetness that I look for and use when I'm painting in watercolour. Now it takes a lot of practice but eventually you'll get to know them instinctively and you'll know what you can and can't do at those various stages of dampness. Okay, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon with a new tutorial.